Okay, folks. Hi there. This is Kim Willis again with another one of my interviews, interviewing successful people, up and coming people in the internet marketing space, online world, all of that. And I've got uh, a great guy on the on the on the call tonight, and it's uh, Ryan Bidolf, who currently is in Bali, but he hails from the U.S. I think it's New Jersey. Is that right, Ryan? Say hi. That's Kim. Yes. Yeah. You're uh, yeah, from, from New Jersey. Actually, one thing I meant to ask you uh, before we, we did the interview, is there, uh, I think there's a, a, a suburb or something in New Jersey called Hoboken, is that right? Bergen? Actually, yeah, there's a county up in uh, northern New Jersey, about ew, 40 minutes north of where I grew up in Plainfield, New Jersey. So yeah, it's actually a, a county right outside of New York City. Okay, all right. Well, thanks for confirming that. I had heard of it and just wanted to uh, get that clarified. Yes, now, uh, just, to, just to, to complete the introduction here, I'll just get this uh, screenshot. Yeah, that's working better. Ryan, Ryan has uh, had a very interesting journey, and uh, he's come from a point where he was working in a traditional job space in the U.S. and decided to make a change, and... He, as a result of that, he, he got involved with uh, various money-making programs. But the most success that he's ever had, uh, the most success he's had to date, has is, is come as a result of getting his new blog up and running called Blogging from Paradise. And I'm, I've become quite a fan of what he's doing, and I've been following him from going from one country to another. So without any further ado, I'm just going to hand it over to Ryan for, for a few minutes. Just perhaps, Ryan, if you could just share your journey, just a, perhaps a, a potted version of your journey from where you were in New Jersey to where you are right now. Sure thing, Kim. First off, thanks so much for interviewing me. I really appreciate it. I feel very honored. Um, my name is Ryan Bidoff. I just turned 40 last week in beautiful Bali. Started off about seven years ago. I committed fully to doing the online bit after I was axed. I was working as a security guard in New Jersey down at good old Mar Terminals in North New Jersey, and they downsized us. Changed everything over to computers, uh, cut the workforce in half. My then girlfriend, now wife, Kelly Cooper, she told me about the online bit because before I started online, Kim, I had no clue what a blog was. I didn't know anything about SEO. I had never run a business. And that's literally, I knew how to check my email and ESPN.com. That's all I knew seven years ago. I did nothing online. So long and short of it, I delved into the online bit. Uh, I dove in, quote unquote, but really I had no experience with running a business or really doing anything online or offline in the entrepreneurial area. So I, I really had to learn baptism by fire style. I struggled for a number of years. I didn't take it seriously. You know, I kicked around. I went seventy thousand dollars in debt. I mean, sued my creditors. Went through some real nightmares along the way. But I always held my dream. And there's one point I make now to people that are just starting, if they're struggling, or even if they're established. And I'm going to bring it up about six levels. It's you have to know why you're doing the online bit, and you have to tie it to something very freeing, whether it's to free yourself financially or just to free yourself and your audience from, say, uh, if you're not as big on the nine to five gig. To be able to make your own schedule, you know, set your own salary and travel the world. And I always knew that because when you want to do something so badly that you know it's going to free you, you'll do the uncomfortable things that most people dodge that will lead to that freedom. So long and short of it, I did a couple online uh, gigs. I did gifting for a while. I had success with it. Um, I also did some affiliate marketing. But things really went to overdrive back in June of 2014, when I was in Savu Savu, Fiji on a house sit, my old blog got suspended because my hoster wasn't too big on gifting. Long and short of it, within like a 20-minute time frame, and I've been wondering for a while in my mind, should I be doing this? I'm not quite clear on it. I wasn't quite in love with it. You know, should I trash this blog? And sure enough, my hosting company made that decision for me. Trashed uh, 3,400 posts, I believe, from my old blog. Started blogging from Paradise. The idea hit me in like minutes after I let go, and it's the idea of release is so huge. But I let go of the gifting, I let go of my old blog. Um, very necessary stepping stone. Um, but once I started blogging from Paradise, my intent was to free me and to free my audience. And basically, I just wanted to teach people how to retire to a life of island hopping through smart blogging, as I had done. Um, I had had the full time income by that point, so 
long and short of it, I just dove into it, and right off the bat, I got endorsements from Chris Brogan, who was uh, Richard Branson's business coach, uh, also Tony Robbins, Paulo Coelho, GM, Microsoft. He endorsed my first two blogging from Paradise eBooks. Also, Yaro Starik wrote me an endorsement I was so humbled by. I spoke at NYU about them. One of the chapters on monetization is being used as a study guide for an inbound marketing class in NYU. So things really took off really quickly for me, even though I had had success before. And so much of it was based on the clarity. So that pretty much brings us up to where we are today. Uh, here I am sitting in beautiful Jimbaran, Bali, a, a four-month house sit, or a honeymoon house sit, because we just got married a few weeks ago. So from the security guard days till now, here we are. Yeah, wow, uh, that's exciting. So you, you made the switch in June last year, June 202014. Um, what do you attribute to the kind of meteoric uh, rise or the fantastic uh, success that you've had since then? What, you you already, obviously already had a following before you made the switch, but were there any other reasons? Uh, oh, you, you mentioned clarity, but, but you know, in other practical ways, were there other reasons as to why uh, it took off like a rocket? Career? I really think, Kim, that that the clarity, as far as practical things, uh, practical reasons or practical occurrences, like the best explanation I could give is that when I was doing the stuff I was doing before, I had to work like hell to make a full-time income. And I made the full-time income, but everything was a struggle. It was almost like I was trying to swim across a, a body of water, say I'll say the, the Gulf of Thailand, if you will, yeah. uh, wearing a heavy-weighted jacket. And when I got the clarity, and I knew I had to let go of that jacket, and that was the old stuff that I did, um, say it was with the gifting and also with the blogging and a few different income streams I was working it felt like I not only took off the jacket, but like I was crossing a 10-foot stream. Like right. everything just became so easy and so light. And it was just that inner knowing. Like I'm so big on intuitive pulse. I'm like huge on that. And in the past, I just, I honored it on and off. I honored it on and off. But this was one time in my life where it was just like that. It was really that, that hosting. I mean, I in my mind, I'd known for a while that I had to let go of the gift thing. And I had to go that way of... um that niche or whatever, even my old blog, because I switched niches so much. I guess that would probably be a pretty apt practical tip. I, I blogged on so many topics on my old blog. Uh, personal development, law of attraction, gifting, um, uh, making money online, work at home. I had like literally 30-something categories. Yeah. And I, yeah, when you try to do too many things, you'll be okay in each of those things maybe. In one of those niches, you'll maybe be a little more successful than others, but you can't really kill it online in a positive way and do really well by trying to divide your energies in five areas, let alone 30. So I think that was really one of the biggest things. I just had to say, listen, I'm going to blog about blogging tips for people that want to retire to a life of bottom hopping, people who want to leave the 95 or want to become full-time pro bloggers. So really that was it. Once I decided to do that and that's all my posts would be about, mm. that meteoric rise occurred. Yeah, so clarity and focus. Mm. Yeah. 100%, 100%. That focus is like, I believe that where your attention and energy goes, grows. And all those like wonderful people in the world, like Tony Robbins is the why guy. So that's all he does. He's the personal development guy. Okay, he builds businesses, but he just helps people figure out that why and just drills down into it. And Richard Branson, the business builder, and you can just look across the board. All these people gave all their energy to one purpose, and it just expanded to something mammoth and monumental. And me, I had to stop giving it to like 30 different niches, even though I was talented. I mean, I had 100, 1,000 a inspirational quotes that I've written. And I had all these things, but I had to let it all go and just say, I'm going to do one thing. Mm. And when I did one thing, I just did it really well right off the bat. And I had a lot of practice, too, and I've written a lot. But, like, I was mining talents I didn't even know existed. Like, my blog posts now where I tell in-depth stories, and each of my posts, one a week is 7,000 words. I have to stop it at sometimes 8,000 words. I'd be here for who knows how long. <laughs> but it's, it's something that I enjoy so much, and granted, I practice like crazy, but in the same respect, when I let go of all that worry and anxiety, oh, do I have to do all these streams? Like, 
the universe just inspired me to start creating some really wacky stuff. And I make some, I don't know, at least I think there are some interesting connections. People seem to tell me that they're pretty fascinating, the links I make between blogging and, you know, uh, whatever. I can't even think. I'm trying to think of the one today. 17 lessons I learned from my 22-hour uh, plane ride to Bali. And I just talked about 17 different things in my mind that just hit me. What I saw on the plane, what I experienced even before the flight, and I linked them in the different um, blogging lessons. So I don't know. It's just I think that real release and that focus is what really uh, made it go. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, another thing that I've noticed is that you, you've become, you, you network with uh, other bloggers who, who might be on a similar journey. Do you, Very true. Can you expand on that a little bit? Uh, how you, basically, you help each other, don't you? Yeah, it's, I'm such a huge believer in operating on a creative plane over a competitive plane. Mm. I think we live in an abundant world where there's just more than enough of everything for everybody. Really, it's unlimited. So I figure why not work with people so we could support each other and before instead of against. And it's really, it seems like a subtle energetic thing, but it's really very powerful. It's really infinitely powerful. So I just learn from really brilliant people out there, people like Adrian Smith, who runs an absolutely monstrously uh, huge and supportive community. Um, guys like Matthew Capala is a really good friend of mine. He's actually the NYU professor who extended the opportunity to me to speak at NYU, which is beyond humbling. Yeah. Um, just people like that, guys like Ray Higdon and MLM, who I've just followed for a number of years, and he's been supportive uh, of me along the way. And it's just people in my niche, and even people who might be a little bit outside of it, but just who are just bright lights. And I just learn from them. We, you know, we support each other along the way. We promote each other. And I think of it, Kim, as like a spider web. You start off in the middle. You see that little spider uh, developing its web, working its way around. The more people you make friends with and you support and you promote and you inspire and you're just there for them, you build those friendships, it's like a spider web that just keeps going out wider and wider and wider. And that's your reach. You'll be on Twitter and Facebook and on blog comments and you'll just keep, that web will keep widening as you support one another and then that's how you get known and that's how you prosper and that's how you prosper others. So I'm just so huge on that creative plane of thought. You create, you support other people and um, you know, you promote each other and your trust factor will go through the roof when people like, you know, Chris Brogan, I was so blessed to have him promote me without me asking for him to endorse me. He's a New York Times bestselling author. I never asked him. He just, I sent him an email saying, listen, you know, Chris, this is a, my new ebook out. You know, I just want to tell you, thank you so much for inspiring me to do it because you were a huge driver. And then he tweet endorsed me right after that. And he tweet endorsed my next ebook too. And it's like, how could I ever do that unless I had left comments on his post, really in depth comments for three or four months when he had comments open. And I did that and I built that bond and, I'm no way offline. I'm getting through gatekeepers to get to this guy. <laughs> but online, it's a different story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good point. Um, all right, you've, built, you've, you've uh, had a dramatic increase in, in your following, your fans, your audience. What, uh, let's talk about the monetization side of things. What are, your, what are the main uh, you know, drivers of your income these days or sure. ingredients? Sure thing. Right now, uh, freelance writing is one of my big ones. I have uh, one very big client who I see a high volume through each month, and then a lot of other clients who send me steady orders. So freelance writing is one of my big ones. I'm starting to expand blog coaching, where yeah. I help people drive traffic, uh, make money blogging, build their brand, really more than that, gain clarity in what they do, because I talk about my story, how important it is to get clear mm. on that that niche that seems to you that you really love uh, and then also holding your driver in mind you know that freeing driver so you do the uncomfortable things that you got to do to really rock it out online um, those are two big ones yeah. also I'm starting to develop that ebook um, or ebook rather income stream I sell my ebooks blog and paradise ebooks on sales and on Amazon I also do a little bit of affiliate marketing not too much right now I'm focusing on Hootsuite Pro because I use it and I really believe in it and it's helped me so so much so those are my four main ones right now, and then I'm just kind of toying with other ideas as I expand and just uh, find a little time to think about that type of stuff. Yeah. You know, so so with, with, with the writing that you do for clients, is that 
within the broad niche or, or is it uh, not depending on you? Oh, as far as my freelance clients? Yeah, you're freelance. Mm. Yeah, actually, it's it's a number of uh, different niches. My One of my bigger clients, I cover a lot of different, um, really, almost unlimited number of niches. I do my research online yeah. you know, on reputable sites. But as far as my, most of the clients who come through my blog, I stick to internet marketing, growing your online business, um, really online related stuff, yeah. home business related stuff, you know, things I've covered over the years and really more than that stuff that I just, that was one of the blessings. And again, you see that kind of bricks building up or whatever. Uh, one of the blessings of my old blog, I did cover so many niches, even though it was a mistake in one way, it gave me the knowledge to where I could just churn these articles out, whether it's from social media to home-based business to work at home to make money online, yeah. that I could put it out there. So, so that was definitely a blessing, but really a wide range of niches I cover as far as freelance writing. Mm. You also offer web design services, is that right? Actually, my designer, it's through my blog, there's yeah. also a, um, a web design link, but that is that actually funnels right into my designer, Philip Deuce. Okay. Who designed every one of my covers? He designed my blog. He's a uh, really talented designer from Birmingham in the UK. So that will go right into his page, and that was a nice little deal we worked out. Where I figured, okay, hey, you know, I could get money, pay him one time, and he can get that, or I can give him an unending flow of business. And like he's really raked it in and cashed it off of it, which I'm so happy about. You know, yeah. giving him the uh, designer credits on my cover and then also having that on my blog. So I say, listen, this will be recurring. If you want to do that, this will be a lot more than a job. You'll get so many clients through, you know, yeah. through that with that Symbian partnership. So. Yeah, well, that's great. And so what, what does uh, 2015 have in store for you? Oh, that's really a good question. I think I, I do have one book coming out. I have my blogging from paradise, how to retire to a life of the island hopping part two. Yeah. Um, so the process of building that book right now, I believe I'm on chapter four, so I still have quite a few to get through there. Other than that, Kim, I really want to just dive into these long form 7,000, 8,000 word posts each week, keep telling stories, keep linking it into, you know, blogging, living the digital nomad lifestyle. Um, expanding my coaching services as well. I'm really drawing down into that more and more, advertising yeah. that more, getting that out there. And really more than anything, just networking aggressively, you know, taking advantage of blog commenting to expand my presence online. I know the blog. I'm really clear on it. I feel really good about it. The eBooks are out there. I have 10. This will be number 11 coming up. It's really just putting on the, the rush, the blitz, the promotional surge, if you will, because really last year I spent so much time writing the content, getting the eBooks out there. I published 10 in four months. Now it's going to be time to put my promotional blitz on, at least through the first half of the year. Yeah. Um, that's all my offline stuff, or online stuff rather, and offline just enjoying this house sit on a resort slash villa um, in Jimberon, which is just jaw-droppingly beautiful. Um, we're stunned to, to be here. We're going to be here for a bit, four months at least, but it's open-ended, so maybe six, maybe eight. So offline enjoying the travels like you do yourself, and yep. then I'm also kind of uh, working those ideas. Wow. And no uh, plans in the foreseeable future for relocating back to the U.S.? No. We actually just left. Um, we were there for two months during Christmas. I got married and also visited my friends and family for a couple months, but um, I love the U.S., I love New Jersey, but after spending 36 years there, never being on a plane, not having my passport, my last vacation was 1989 before uh, <laughs> my trip, this trip started 46 months ago, so I'm just soaking up as much as I can around the world. New Jersey rocks in its own land, so does America, but yeah, um, let's just put it this way, Kim, I just had dinner at a warung in Bali. Uh, for me and my wife for uh, 98,000, 91,000 rupiah, which is between seven and eight bucks. And then we got a whole bunch of, well, I shouldn't say a whole bunch of stuff, two bags of tempeh chips, um, a sweet snack. I believe I got some little wafers, chocolate wafers, and two avocados. That, let's see, 91,000 for dinner, and then two bags of chips, two avocados, a sweet snack. That was a dollar ten USD. <laughs> so, like I said, I'm doing okay financially, you know, thank the universe. 
who I could live back in the States, no problem, and live in New Jersey these days. But when I land in Bali, my net worth jumps six times oh, yeah. or whatever, you know? And I look at the USD versus rupee, so it's like, it's tough to turn it down. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You, know you know yourself being in oh. Southeast Asia, it's just amazing. Yeah. Yeah, Monday night I went to, uh, I found a local hairdresser to get my hair cut, and uh, it was $1.25. $1.25. Now, back home in Australia, I would pay easily $25. And this is not to, a, I'm not talking about a high class hairdresser, just your, the local barber. Um, $25 easily is, uh, is the going rate. So I paid $1.25 the other night crazy it really is and i remember too kim when we traveled through because we went to fiji last year we had a house in Savo Savo, and going through sydney i remember a port not even five minute three to four minute uh we stayed right outside the airport we didn't go into town we stayed in that almost no man's land right around the airport and a four a three to four minute taxi ride uh to the airport was like 23 dollars yeah, uh, AC, and I was like, I, I, you know, and it's a thing you just know. And I know in New Jersey too how it is. It's just you know, it, it's tough. And I, not pen. I remember, yeah, I got my hair cut for a dollar, a dollar ten or whatever it was. Or even here in Bali, I remember the one time haircut, shampoo, and legion. Haircut, shampoo. She gave me a shoulder massage, shoulder massage, and it was like a buck twenty five. I gave her two dollar tip, and she was through the through the oh, roof. Oh yeah. <laughs> forget about it. What is this? Oh no, you made a mistake. I said, no, no, this is a tip. <laughs> She's like, oh, wow. So they, it's refreshing uh, to see the not just to be able to do this and, and and treat people and be able to obviously you know save so much and enjoy so much, but being able to really you know treat folks here and really appreciate it. It's I don't know. It's just to me, there's no other no better way to live. And yeah. I'm just yeah. glad I found this lifestyle at 36 and not mm. 66. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, they, you're right. They do treat us very well. They make us feel like royalty. Um, mm. They know we've got, got some money and, you know, we, we, uh, we're generous with them. They, they, uh, they're extremely grateful. But, uh, yeah, all right. Well, that's, uh, that's a nice positive note to leave things on, I think. Uh, great, uh, great interview. Thanks very much, Ryan, for, uh, for participating. Now... Uh, what I'm going to suggest to anybody who sees this or listens to this recording to go and visit Ryan's blog. It's bloggingfromparadise.com and at the very least, get hold of his book, his book, uh, part of the series, Blogging from Paradise. I think you'll love it, absolutely love it. Devour his book, get on to, uh, get on to his mailing list as well and uh, he every week he'll send you out a new update all around the theme of blogging from paradise. I think we're we're kind of kind of have a like mind here because we're both doing a similar sort of thing, traveling through different parts of the world at the moment of Asia, and living the laptop lifestyle. So it's fantastic to talk to somebody else of like mind. Thanks very much, Ryan. It's been great having you uh, as a guest on this little interview format. Oh, Ken, please. It was my total honor. Thank you so much for having me. It was such a blast. Thanks, Ryan. Great. Talk to you again, eh? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Okay, buddy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.